Good morning. We welcome you to Mingo Baptist Church this Sunday morning, and we're thankful for the ones that are here uh, in the sanctuary with us this morning. We're also glad to have the ones that are watching online as well as possibly through the FM radio station 89.1. We, we do welcome each one of you uh, to our morning Sunday school, and we do ask that you come back and be with us at 11 o'clock this morning for our morning worship show, uh, service with Brother Charles will be leading that service this morning. So we just lift him up in our prayers this morning as he speaks God's word. Uh, this morning in our lesson, we're going to be finishing up uh, a series of uh, lessons we had. This is the sixth and final lesson on, as a Christian, things that we can be sure of. Um, we know as Christians, because we have Jesus in our life, there's things that that God has given us that we can be sure of and this morning we're going to be looking at being sure of our salvation and we can be sure that God saves us when we put our trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior um, talking about trust in this world I know each one of us has probably sometime or another in our life put our trust in somebody only to be let down or be hurt by that person when they didn't follow through uh, with what we expected from them. So in light of that, a lot of times probably in our lives when we go through different situations, we might begin to wonder or question, you know, how can I really trust God at, at what he says he's going to do? You know, God may say that uh, I can trust him, but how can I really know for sure that I'm saved? Well, I can tell you in my own life, through experiences, time and time again, he's proven to me of his faithfulness and his trustworthiness, uh, things I've been through, um, things in his word that I read. And so I'm here to tell you this morning, when we have a relationship with God, we can rest in the assurance that when we put our trust in him, he will save us. And our Christian life, when it's grounded solely in the Word of God, it's going to point us to the death and resurrection of Christ as the only way to salvation and a relationship with God. Now, we can't add anything to it. Uh, we can try, but we can't. Um, all we need to do is just simply put our trust in Jesus Christ and what He did at the cross for us, and we can be assured of a relationship with God. And this morning, before we start our scripture, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning for the opportunity to come together, Father God, and just to be able to study your word, lift our praises up to you. I just ask you to be with each one of us this morning as we go through this lesson. Open our hearts, give us wisdom and understanding, Father. And Lord, just give me the words you would have us to speak this morning and not mine. Father, we love you and praise you, and we just thank you again for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. And we're finishing up 1 John uh, chapter 5 is the uh, chapter we'll be in this morning. And we're going to start with verses 1 through 5. And it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. And by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So what's John trying to tell us here? He's telling us that we're born of God because we put our trust in Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. When we put our trust in God, we know God is love. We learned that last week in our Sunday school lesson. And if God is love, then when we love him back, he changes whosoever believeth. When we believe on Jesus as the Christ. That's where our faith comes from. And we're going to see as we go along in this lesson that everything points back to Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Without him, none of this can be possible. And we really, with God, have a relationship. I kind of look at it as like a child has a relationship with their parents. 
You know, as the parents pour out their love on that child, they want what's best for that child, and God wants what's best for his children as well. He loves us. He pours his love out on us. And as a child grows, he learns to love his parents back. And because of that love from his parents flowing through him, if you have siblings, you may not always get along with them, but you love them. And that's the way it's what God's telling us here. Everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So basically what he's saying is everyone that loveth God will also love his children. God's love is going to flow through us to other people. We know as Christians that God, love is the key. <coughs> we know from last week's study that God is love. God loves all people. Jesus demonstrated that love by voluntarily giving his life on the cross to die for something that we couldn't do for ourselves. And in turn, that love, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, flows through us. And we show that by our actions toward other Christians and other people by spreading that love. So love is the key to the Christian life. And now, to, be, to love God without loving his children is impossible. It's already told us that in the scripture. We learned last week. You know, he that says that he loveth God and not loveth his brother, the truth not in him. In other words, he's a liar. It just can't happen. You can't say you love God, God's love be in you, and you not love his children. If we truly love God, we're going to love his children. But we're also going to strive to keep his commands. And how we do that, our love for others is going to be expressed in our actions, the things that we do, the things that we show other people. But our love for God is going to be expressed in our obedience to him. <coughs> Excuse me. When we love God, we're going to keep his commands or do our best to keep his commands. Now, he told us in here that his commands are not grievous. In other words, they're not heavy or burdensome. You know, in fact, Jesus stated in Matthew 11, 30, he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So God's not putting, when we become in a relationship with him, he's not putting anything heavy and burdensome on us. Jesus is going to be there to help get us through uh, these different things. And on top of that, God's commands or his will. And he's the all-knowing, all-loving, all-caring father. And he wants what's best for us. Always. So, how are we able to keep God's commandments? Well, when we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, <coughs> we've been given the power by God to overcome temptation <coughs> and Satan's forces. And that power is our faith. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're in a sense taken out of this sinful world, so to speak, and we're put in God's family where God rules over us. But the people that are unsaved, the people of the world, are still under Satan's rule. So we know Jesus died to save us from our sins, and he defeated the devil in his works. So because of that, we can rest in assurance that those born of God can overcome the world by our faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. We've stated Jesus has already won the victory. So we're going to have battles that we go through in life, but because of our assurance that God or Jesus has defeated the devil, we know the end of the story. It's going to help us to win the battles that we go through because we know that someone lives in us now that is far more powerful than anything Satan can throw at us. A firm belief in Jesus enables us to overcome this evil. Now, such faith is not means of escape from conflict. So it don't mean just because we've become Christians and we've put our trust in Jesus that he's going to keep us protected from all the things of this world. That's just not going to happen. A matter of fact, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the devil's probably going to come at you a whole lot harder than what he did before. 
He's going to throw everything he's got at you. But again, we have Jesus in our heart, and he's far more superior than the devil, far more powerful. So we can rest assured in that. And we'll move on to the next set of uh, verses, 11 through 13. And he says, And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life. And this life is in the Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, <clears throat> that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So what's this record that he's saying God has given to us? You know, what's this proof? Well, it's right here. It's God's Word. God has given us His Word that we can trust in and believe in. So I can know I have eternal life because God's Word says so. That's it. God's given us eternal life, but he's also said that this life is in his Son. <clears throat> so, when I look at eternal life, you know, what does that mean to me? You know, I'm looking at it as life as God meant it to be before sin come into the world. I believe, you know, it's a joy-filled life that we're going to be in God's kingdom with him with no beginning and no end. That's what we have to look forward to. And the only one that has the ability and authority to present us with this gift of eternal life is the one that created us, the one that created everything. And when we're saved, when we become saved, we get this gift of eternal life. There's nothing we have to do. It's a gift, because if we work for it, it's not a gift. <coughs> now, we have a decision to make. <coughs> we can either accept this gift, well, we can decline it. And it kind of looks at it like a child at Christmas time. And when I was little, I'd open a present and I'd get a big shiny toy. I accepted that gift pretty quick. But if I opened up a present and it was a pair of socks, what did I normally do as a child? I'd throw that over to the side. You know. So we got the decision to make. We want to accept Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior and accept God's gift of eternal life. He also goes further to say that he hath the Son hath life. So, we've got to go through Jesus and what he did at the cross and accept him in our life and believe what he's done for us to have the gift of God of eternal life. Um, John 3.16 says, for, whosoever loved, uh, for God so ever loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's telling me that Jesus is the only way we can have a relationship, a restored relationship with God. There's no other way. And there's many other verses in God's Word that points us to God as being our line to God, our relationship with God. <clears throat> now, if we hear people talk different, or if we see books, and there's books out there that say there's other ways to a relationship with God, there's false teachers, we need to steer clear and keep our mind away from these things and stay focused on God's Word because God's Word is truth. And in verse 13, John says, These things I tell you to those who believe on the name of the Son of God. So he's talking to Christians. He's trying to reassure us to stay focused on what God tells us in His Word. And we'll be able to have an understanding of God's life. So I can know I have eternal life because God's word says so. So as long as we stay focused and in line with what God's word says, we have a belief and we have a knowledge that God gives us once we're saved that we have eternal life. John uh, verses 18 through 21 we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. 
And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we, that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So, I guess the best way to sort of look at these verses is, I can know I'm saved because my life's changed. <clears throat> we're not the same person we were before we asked Jesus to come in our lives. If we are, maybe we need to sit down and reconsider our faith in Jesus. Are we really, have we really accepted him into our heart? Once we accept Jesus Christ in our, uh, in our lives, we are going to become changed. We're not going to want to do the same things we did when we won't saved. <coughs> Excuse me. And in verse 18, he started a lot of we knows. Uh, and he's talking about Christ as Christians. We know these things. We should know these things. The reason we can know these things is because God has given us the knowledge. Because we've accepted him. And once we do that, he gives us wisdom and knowledge. Now the ones that have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior or unsaved, they don't have this knowledge. <clears throat> First John wrote that whosoever is born, whosoever is born of God sinneth not. So in other words, once we ask Jesus to come in our lives, we're not going to continue in our sinful lives the way we did before we were saved. Um, we're going to be a changed person. Now, that don't mean that we're not going to slip up and sin some. But sin no longer has control over my life no more like it did before my relationship with God. In other words, when I was a sinner, I kind of had a habit or a habitual forming of sin. That's what I did. When I become a Christian, I'm no longer that way. Sin is not a characteristic of a Christian, in other words. Second, John says that he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Uh, basically stating that Christians are assured of being kept safe by, by accepting Jesus Christ in our life. And how Jesus protects us is through him by giving us eternal life. John wrote that Satan, which he calls in these verses, that wicked one, touches us not. Now, that don't mean that he's going to leave us alone. That means he don't have control over us no more. He's going to continue, and as I said, because we're Christians even harder, he's going to continue to attack us and try to uh, get us to turn away from our beliefs in God. But we know that we're of God's family, and we're saved, and we're no longer under Satan's control of this world, so to speak. And John stated in verse 20, he says, We know that the Son of God has come. Well, we do know God. Jesus, uh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ has come. We, but it goes a little further than that. What all do we know about Jesus? We know Jesus became a human being to live on this earth with us. We know of his teachings. We know of his miracles. We know that he was crucified. And on the third day, he was resurrected. And we know he ascended back to heaven to be with his Father. All these things are knowledge God gives us in his word and when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus has given us understanding in all these things. <clears throat> and we are born in him, he goes on to say, and we are in him that is true, even in the Son, Jesus Christ. So, the only way people can be in him is that, in the one that's true, is by being in his son, Jesus Christ. So again, what's he telling me? He's telling me that I've got to accept and believe that Jesus Christ is his son, and I've got to believe on what Jesus Christ did at the cross for us in order for me to renew or restore that relationship that I can have with God. There's no other way. And the words true God indicates that our God to me, is the only one true God. He's the one true living God. John ends this verse, again, as he started with the verses, eternal life. 
When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we restore our relationship with God. God gives us the gift of eternal life. Now, this is a gift that we're getting that we can't cash in on, so to speak, right now. But we know it's there. We'll have that eternal life when we die or either when Jesus comes back again. Verse 21, he goes on with a warning. John warns us not to let ourselves to be deceived by idols or false teachers. In other words, we need to keep focused on God. We need to keep focused on God's word. And as I said earlier, we don't need to be led astray by false teachings, by uh, books that are false teachings uh, and, 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 and idols, so to speak. You know, things that we can put in, in front of God in our relationship with Him. We need to stay focused on God. Now, we need to have a burden because God loves us. We know God loves all people. We need to have a burden for the lost. Each one of us knows people probably in our families, people in our communities, people we work with that are lost. And God loves us so much that he gave his son to die for us, like again, something that we couldn't do for ourselves. And that love is supposed to be poured through us out to other people. We need to be about God's business. We need to be concerned about the lost. And we need to be witnessing to them. Now, true, we can't save them, but we know the one that can. We can lead them to God and just leave the results up to Him. <clears throat> so, we've seen in these last six lessons that we've had over the past, we've seen the assurance God gives each one of us as Christians. We can be sure of forgiveness. We can be sure that we have a relationship with God and we can be sure of the truth. We can be sure of victory. We can be sure of God's love as we studied last week. And this morning, we've seen that we can be sure of our salvation. We can be sure that God saves us when we put our trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, and what He did at the cross. Everything points to Jesus and what He's done. When we do this, the Holy Spirit's presence in our body will be able to guide us <coughs> in living an abundant life here on this earth, but also assures us of an eternal life in the future. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do thank you for this time this morning. We thank you, Lord, for these words that you've spoken, Lord, and the assurance that you give us as Christians, Lord, of our salvation. Help us, Lord, always to... Keep our faith and our trust in you, Lord. Allow you to lead and guide us in our lives here on this world, knowing, Lord, that we will have eternal life one day with you, an everlasting life with no beginning and no end. We thank you, Father, for this gift. We thank you for all your blessings. Lord, I just ask that you be with each one of us here today. Be with the ones that are home, Father, that are unable to be here. We just ask you to pour your blessings out upon us and lead and guide us in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name. Holy name we offer this prayer. Amen.